in this box is the Panda Power Module, a cool piece of technology to make your Bronco go a little bit faster, get a lot of torque, add some horsepower, and make this thing even more fun to drive than it already is. This is a modification for everyone because it does not void warranty. We're gonna be diving into the installation, how it works, what you can expect for that price point at around $600. If you're thinking about buying a Bronco or you already own one and you love driving it and you wanna love it even more, this video is for you. Let's get into the process. This is gonna be a fun one as we even compare a zero to 60 time at the end, so stick around. Let's see what's in the box. Shout out to Panda for an awesome package. Power module sticker design tells us what engine we have to make sure we have the right one. This is where your wiring harness plugs in. This is almost like Apple-like packaging. Our wiring harness. Some Panda Motor Works stickers. <laughs> Some badges for the side of the Bronco. We have these little plastic pieces, which is mounting hardware with zip ties so we can take it on and off very easily. And then right here, this is a very vital part of this installation I'm gonna walk you through, which technically, as far as a mechanical aspect, this is the hardest part of the install. I'm gonna break down and make it easy for you to tell all the tools you need, don't even stress about it. A step holder spark plug so that when we introduce more boost to make more power to have more fun, your engine runs happy because you have a little bit colder of a spark plug. When you add more boost, it creates more heat. This is one way to bring that back down, make the engine run happy. What's nice about these also, four in a package, because we have a four cylinder, these spark plugs are pre-gapped by a tech at Panda Motor Works because they also do work in Missouri where they're located. So they have each one double checked, thrown back in the original NGK packaging for your pleasure to come home, take them out of the package and throw them right in your engine and not even have to worry or get a gapping tool or anything to save you that one step in the process. Step one, pop the hood and disconnect the battery. Grab your plastic fastener tool and pry up on some of the wiring harness to get it out of the way. Pull off the cover for your high pressure fuel pump on top of the engine. Pull out the insulation as well. Now that you've made some space, grab your eight millimeter socket, pull out the four eight millimeter bolts holding the four ignition coils in on the top of the cylinder head. You do not have to disconnect the wires, slide those ignition coils out of the way. Thread each of the new spark plugs in by hand. They're pre-gapped and checked by a technician at Panda Motor Works. So it'll save you that step. You don't even need to worry about it. Then torque each spark plug down to 10.9 pounds. Put everything back as you took it apart and you're ready to install the power module now. You made it through that, you made it through the hardest part. Spark plugs, check. This Bronco series wouldn't be possible without our friends over at modsandmiles.com. Check out their auction website. You might purchase your next vehicle or sell your current vehicle on the site. They are for the modified community that we are a part of and that's why you're here. We like to work on cars, modify them, make them faster, better, stronger, look cooler. That's what they are about. There's even a cannonball car listed as an auction right now. 
purpose-built vehicle pretty cool so you'll find interesting stuff like that on modsandmiles.com and if you sign up and become a verified user you get automatically entered into an amg giveaway that they're doing with legit street cars so go check out the website modsandmiles.com linked in the description thank you to them for making this bronco series possible now we're moving on to the wiring together let's locate the map sensors so this guy right there is our map sensor on our intake manifold then if we move around, come around to the front, this guy is the map sensor on the charge pipe. These two sensors measure how much boost pressure is in the system. The white piece, slide it back a little bit, it will make a clip sound, and then you press down on the actual part that you push back and slide it off. When you are working with this harness, you have A and B. For the intake manifold, we're working with A. Let's go ahead and plug this into our map sensor. Just like that. The other end is going to go into the wire that you unplugged from the map sensor. Where the pins are inside this connection, there's a little flat side. You can tell which orientation to plug it in by that little flat spot. The bulky side facing up and the white side of that clip facing down, that's how it's orientated. The cords are going to be a little bit messy in this process. We're going to come back and fix them with zip ties once we're done. Hopping over to the charge pipe, press down, slide it out. That one's good to go. Here's our connection. Press the gray piece in. Plug for the wiring harness and plug for the actual sensor is all intact. Now we just have our main plug for the actual power module. Whoa, I've never seen that. Huh. That's a trip. It only goes in one way. Ah, and then it sucks it in with this purple thing. That's cool. So the app has a strange name, Tuning Semicolon Pro. You can see it on screen, what to type in. With the battery disconnected, pull out your module and right under the barcode is your serial number, which you will need to plug in to the Tuning Pro app. Serial number has been entered into the phone. I didn't hit the next step. I went ahead and plugged in the battery. So this is turned on and can emit a Bluetooth signal. Here's a tip that's gonna save you a lot of heartache. I've been sitting here for about 40 minutes scratching my head hit the info button. The Bluetooth pin is comprised of the last six digits of the serial number. Oh. One, seven, three, three, seven, one. Pair, connecting, please work. Aha. All right, we have fine tuning. Use the plus and minus buttons to adjust the setting per driving mode. The higher the number, the more aggressive the tuning will be. We recommend to slowly work your way up through the numbers doing long test drives on each step as long as the engine runs smoothly. The warm up timer allows you to postpone the tuning on each engine start to allow it to gain optimal temperature. All right. Back from Home Depot, barely have enough to make this happen. I got four pieces. What you wanna do, stick them together. This is satisfying. These are called 3M Dual Lock Velcro. Sticks together dirty or wet. Okay. We've got the back of our module. Stick it on. My superior image surface cleaner coming in clutch again. I like how this looks under the hood in this orientation best. It's like, yeah, the wiring would be better this way, but that's kind of ugly. I like this. Now we grab all these. Grab these. I left the ends of the zip ties on so you can see them. Got this one here, runs up to hold a bunch of them right there. And then the last one, they're all grouped together here. This way, make sure you push these on here so low real well. But the goal was this has enough play so that I can pull it off, get to my fuse box if needed, no problem. Two 
major things that I think you have on your mind is how much faster is it and what does it drive like? We're gonna go over both of those. We're gonna do a zero to 60 test here in a little bit, but I wanna show you inside the app and what you're getting into. So you have the race, sport, and eco mode, and then if you hit the fine tuning at the bottom, you are looking at your settings. In the fine tuning menu, you have the different numbers for what settings you want. So knowing that if you're doing five or higher, you need to have 91 octane. I really don't feel safe at all running anything higher than six. I don't wanna take the chances. It's a brand new engine. I know Panda wouldn't put out anything that they didn't think was safe, but knowing that it's just gonna increase the boost pressure since this car is brand new, I'm not gonna go above six. Now, regularly, I'm not gonna drive above four. So that's why I have number four as a sport setting. So if we go back, I have it in sport. That's what I drive around with it on the regular. I've gone into a race maybe twice just to test it out. It doesn't feel a ton faster. It's not that much more boost pressure. So I just leave it in sport usually. And then you have eco mode to lower the boost pressure, which is gonna in turn get your gas mileage up. Very, very simple, very straightforward and as deep as you need to go with the app. Let's see the zero to 60 results. And then I'll tell you how this car drives on a daily basis. 8.08 .08 is the time to beat for our 0 to 60 with the stock tune and the intake. Now we have the Panda Power module on, the KN intake, and I have this on setting 4 of 7, I believe. The hardest thing with this, getting a good 0 to 60 time is the traction. Yeah, it does break these tires loose really easily since we don't have any 35s or anything else like that. So let's see what we can do. 8.08, .08, time to beat. The majority of the personality change is in the top end because we're just increasing boost. All that doesn't really happen until about 3,500 RPM until about 6,000. Really doesn't wake up until four. So that's why your zero to 60 isn't that much crazier, but it definitely does help a lot from that, that top of second to third gear. It's just all boost pressure. That's where we gained our time. Let me roll through the gears for you. Since this is just a piggyback system and it tricks the manifold pressure into thinking it's lower than it actually is, it's not actually changing the tuning of the vehicle, it's not changing the way it drives, the drivability, everything is the same. So if you're worried about it being a rougher drive or drive any different than it does stock, not at all. But because the ECU is smart, it knows how much air it's bringing into the engine and it can adjust the air to fuel ratio accordingly. And that's why it's not a bad thing to increase the boost pressure and it's tricking it into thinking it's lower than it is. It knows exactly how much air is going in at the end of the day and it can adjust accordingly. This is a modification for any Bronco owner out there. It doesn't void warranty. It's gonna feel lighter on its feet now. When you add weight to it with the rack, wheels and tires, you name it, you're gonna need all the power you can get with that little four cylinder engine. If you wanna order this with the link in the description, Make sure you use code KARMASPEED at checkout. It's gonna save you $30. It's gonna support the videos as well. And I'd really, really appreciate it. Anything you need on Panda Motor Works site, whether it's maintenance packages for oil changes or these parts or an intake, use code KARMASPEED across the whole website and you can make your Bronco more awesome, get some more parts soon, maybe even some lights, some things we haven't even touched on. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm excited for you guys to install this on your Broncos. And if you wanna see a video where we dyno test an intake, click on this video right here, make some cool noise is a lot more power and I really like how the Bronco drives after this install so you might want to go check that out too and then throw in some more stuff in your cart on Panda Motorworks website.